Good evening. I got a song here. But first, I just want to say thanks. I don't have any channel sponsors, but I feel like there's a few people I have to thank. Uh, first is Brett Papa. Brett's become a really good friend. Our families have become friends. We live on the opposite ends of Nashville, but when we get together, it's always really great. And he's the first person who encouraged me to try the YouTube thing, man. You just gotta, you just gotta do it. You just gotta do it. And he kept telling me that I would be perfect for it. And I was like, I don't know, man. I am, it's just well outside of my comfort zone to talk about myself all the time, you know. But uh, I think it's working out. I'm thinking, I, th I think I'm figuring out how I fit into this whole mess. So, yeah. Second guy I want to thank is Michael Westbrook. Last week, I noticed that my subscribers had gone up like a few hundred. And I thought, that's really weird because I've been flying absolutely under the radar and have added at most like 10 in a day or something. Well, he uh, apparently put a video out about me. I, I had no idea. I start getting these comments. I start getting subscribers. Michael Westbrook sent me over. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. I, I don't even know who this is. Is this guy telling people? And so I, I look him up and up pops a video he did about my channel. And it says, my favorite new YouTube channel, Justin Ostrander. And I was like, oh my goodness, that is so cool. Like he didn't have to do that. But uh, he likes my channel and he thought more people should check it out. So then I started getting a lot of subscribers from that. He has, he has a good sized channel and a lot of his people came over. And um, so welcome to y'all. And then the last person I have to thank is old Uncle Larry himself for the mere mention of his name <laughs> and the explosion that that has caused in my tiny corner of YouTube. Um, that is about the YouTubiest video I've ever done. I think you know what I mean by that. Uh, thumbnail and everything, like it was just chef's kiss, right? Uh, and, you know, I gotta say thanks for selling me the guitar. Thanks for being a huge inspiration, you know. I've been going and watching him play since 2008, you know, and just being inspired. He was one of the first guitar players that I'd heard that I just didn't immediately know what he was doing, you know. I remember being at a gig watching him play with uh, Pat Buchanan, who's another great session guy, great slide player, great songwriter. He used to play these gigs, and his stuff is like a mix of Beatles and uh, Queen and Steppenwolf. I don't know, it's just very classic. And Tom would play, sorry, Uncle Larry. Uncle Larry would play guitar and keys and just his pocket and his feel and the joy that he was experiencing while playing just sort of infects everyone in the room, right? And I remember one time going and watching him and I was sitting at a table with my friend Brian Oakes, who's a fantastic guitar player. John Osborne from the Brothers Osborne was sitting with us uh, well before they even dreamed of having a record deal, you know, and he is a fantastic fantastic guitar player. Uh, who else was at the table? I think there was four of us. There were a bunch of guitar players. That Guitar players all went to Tom's shows whenever he was playing, you're right? Well, he takes one solo all night, and it's this giant, crazy, modal, yes, early Steve Howe meets Larry Carlton on an early 60s Les Paul SG through, you know, a half-stack Marshall at the old Third and Lindsley, which was really small, and the, um, the, the stage was diagonal in the corner of the room. And people lost their minds. I remember everybody stood up, gave a standing ovation. I jumped up. John Osborne and I are high-fiving each other. I think the other guitar player was Devin Malone. I'm not sure. Uh, there were so many there. <laughs> we all were. Anyway, thanks to Uncle Larry. And welcome to all you homeschoolers who came and checked out my video and decided to stick around. So... I'm going to get to work. This is what I do on this channel. I kind of show how I track on songs. And the advice that I want to give on my channel isn't so much like, check out this lick or this is the pedal you need. I'm not knocking those guys. They're cool, right? I have a lot of friends who do that stuff. And, you know, I just think that's pretty well covered in the YouTube world. What I want to talk about and what I want to show you all is here's what I'm listening to, you know? I'm trying to be the kind of guitar player that 
non-guitar playing musicians want in their band or on their record, right? That's what I built my career out of, is being someone who is a team player, right? I'm listening to everybody in the band. I can throw down when I need to. Like, that's a given. That's just a, everybody's going to assume that, that you can play. But can you support a vocal? Can you play with the same emotion as everybody else? Can you listen to the hi-hat? Can you um, not muck up the low end with what the bass player is doing? Can you stay in a complimentary register to the other guitar, you know, or keys. Um, there's a lot to listen to the bigger the band gets. And can you be creative? That's the big thing, right? So those are the kinds of things that I want to talk about here. Um, so let's get to this song. Uh, <clears throat> more aggressive solo. The solo is kind of a weird form. It's like you don't know when it starts. He's kind of tagging the lyric and... Um, I'm just going to kind of play around it and then kind of go off when there's a bit of a gap, I guess. I'm playing my 1982 ES-335. Um, this is a fantastic guitar, and I, I don't know why it's so orangey, but the, the finish just ambered like this, and it's totally natural. If I were to take the pickguard off, it would be ultra blonde, like, in a really cool way. I've got Tom Holmes pickups in it. Um, I have a Faber bridge. I put new pots. These guitars, uh, they come with like 300k pots from the factory. The the early 80s Tim Shaw custom shop um, 335. So I put I put real 500k pots like a like a late 50s would have. I also put some Tone Pros, Clusons. It just looks right. Even though you can see, look at the rings. That's where my, uh, that's where the Grover these came with Grovers. That's where that um, washer on the front used to sit. So anyway, um, I'm, I'm a bit more aggressive than, than I was. I love this guitar. Killer. Okay. Oh, you're probably hearing a bit of... I've got a little bit of reverb. That's coming from that old brown boss pedal, the 63. They couldn't give them away. Like, nobody wanted them. They hated them. And then people started finding out if you leave the controls below 9 o'clock, all three knobs, it actually sounds a lot like a Fender tank from the early 60s. <laughs> Rob McNelly hit me to that. Uh, and then I've got a slapback from a timeline. I'm playing the throwback overdrive boost into an analog Outfitters Sarge, which is a 15 watt kind of a tweed amp built out of an old Hammond A uh, A100, I believe, and it's all going into a Morgan 112 open back cab with an ET65 speaker. So let's get to it. <laughs> start playlisting these uh typically i send a couple options just you know i want people to be taken care of i want them to feel like they have options you know That's pretty cool. So I'm in F sharp, I'm playing like I'm in G, uh, but it's a half step down. So um, really, if you if you listen to the, the couple takes that I've done, I found a different spot in between vocals. So 
if this guy's showing up in that time, he needs to not show up the same time the singer's singing. And that's kind of hard because you're, you're used to just listening to the chords and thinking like, oh, here's the top of the bar. That's when I come in. But you got to listen to the vocal. You got to play around that. So let's do another one. I will playlist that as well. Here we go. <laughs> I think that was cool got got a little little inspired there somewhere that's what you're looking for right like even in my own playing i'm looking for an emotional reaction to something that happened that, that makes me go hey that was cool because generally i play better i've played something better when i have that response and other people respond as well so uh he wanted more in the outro um so the outro's down. L listen to this. I, th I think it's this same guitar, just sort of, we're chilled out. We've come down. So listen to what we have on the outro. <laughs> Actually ends on the five but the acoustic little arpeggio continues so when he says the melody in the outro there's that that one guitar um, is going acoustic does something like that so if I'm going to play with that and play that melody uh, I think I just need to to be slightly mellower maybe I am on the neck pickup I'm messing with the knobs here I am a giant proponent of using the knobs on your guitar like you have an entire universe of different tones and feels and sounds right here um, I try to not step on a million pedals. I, I don't know. I just kind of got over pedals. I like turning an amp up, and I feel like I can get away with that more in the studio, you know? Um, I've said multiple times on this channel that the best tones that I get when someone in the control room, like the producer or artist or a writer or even somebody else in the band who's already done with their parts, and I'm always the last person in the chair because I'm playing solos, I'm stacking parts, whatever. Somebody's like, hey, where, where, did you, where did you get that sound? What is that? I kid you not, more often than not, I have bypassed the pedal board completely and I just turned the amp up. Sometimes I'll, I'll tune, unplug from the pedal board, go straight into the amp and just turn it up. And it's the most open, expressive, uh, thick, biting string separation sound there is you know um so that's what i like so i'm keeping it simple here too let's let's get on this outro and then i'll let you guys go all right, all right, all right. oh i soloed a track just to hear what it was doing and i need to unsolo it all right <laughs> One 
way to do it. Maybe I give him another option. I feel like since the one guitar is already gone, I don't need to just go. I don't need to double what the other guitar is doing. I need to be the same guy that played the solo, but play off of that line, right? Let's try it again. click all right i think i'm good on this so i'm gonna send this off thanks for hanging out and once again thanks for all the support uh this has been really fun and i hope you guys learn a lot uh i hope i learn a lot i'm gonna learn more so i can show more things you know all right have a good one i'll see you later <laughs>